In this video, we're going to learn more about the often undiscussed red flags to dyslexia. There are so many flags to notice when it comes to dyslexia. Even starting as early as pre-K, we can see some common red flags, such as them having difficulty learning their letter names and sounds, difficulty with decoding and encoding, slow and choppy reading, and just a general avoidance of reading. These red flags can even be broken down by age as they grow and as the expected rigor of, and complexity of reading and writing increase. But as a professional in the field, I want to discuss some red flags that are often less discussed. The first and most common red flag for dyslexia is going to be a family history of dyslexia. Did you know that there's a roughly 50% pass rate between first generation? In fact, the definition of dyslexia explicitly states that it is neurobiological in origin, meaning that it's genetic. Frequently, we have had a family member who was not officially diagnosed, but showed signs of a struggle. And those individuals tended to be overlooked because the rate of formal diagnosis is still drastically smaller than what we know exists. Even though 70 to 10% of those with dyslexia inherited it through birth, a larger percentage of the classic 20% exhibit characteristics of dyslexia due to impaired language abilities and skills, which leads me to the next under discussed flag. So flag number two, they've had a previously diagnosed or treated speech impairment or speech difficulty. Did you know that research shows that up to 75% of kids who have had difficulty with speech sound acquisition have difficulty learning to read? All language processing, spoken and written, occur in the same area of the brain. My son had been in speech therapy for articulation and expressive language since he was 18 months old, so I knew to get him involved in early intervention at the first indicator of a reading struggle. The final under-discussed red flag to dyslexia that I will mention today is ADHD. Dyslexia often runs comorbid with other challenges and ADHD, which is, is the most common one. 50% of ADHD children have a comorbid learning disability, of which dyslexia is the most common. Research rates show that ADHD is running comorbid with dyslexia at a 30% rate but from my experience with clients, it is much higher. When you work with Dyslexia On Demand, you can trust that our expertise, individualization, and therapeutic programming set us apart. Our expert CALTs keep a steady eye on student progress through qualitative feedback and quantitative progress monitoring to provide tailored instruction to each student's needs. Please visit us at dyslexiaondemand.com to schedule a personal meeting with me and to learn more about how we can change the life of your child. And please like and follow for more educational videos such as this one.